attending the funeral, then heading up to the game. Cardinals and Cubs, bottom second, Woody Williams. Had it going against Fred McGriff, strikes him out, perfect through four innings, but that was not perfect from Williams' point of view. High, deep, gone, all those things. Number, of the season. number 460 for Fred McGriff. J.D. Drew with the plate in the top of the sixth, fouls it off. Ball takes an odd bounce and a painful one for Mark Hirschbeck. Gets it right in the midsection. We kind of saw, I'm kind of glad we saw that from behind. Yes, I think we we're all happy about that. Bottom seven still tied at one. McGriff, one more time. 13th of the year, comes up 2-1. Crime Dog, two for three, two RBI, and then that was plenty for John Lieber. Uh, absolutely magnificent today. And a day, congratulations to both pitchers on a day of the wind blowing out. Lieber against Eduardo Perez in the eighth inning. He gave him one pitch to hit and he took it. And then he just painted him up away and down and in. And the last hitter of the game gets Albert Pujols out on the front leg and uh, masterful form. One hour and 49 minutes. Why can't I do one game in my life at that time? <laughs> 21st complete game wow. for John Lieber. The pitcher's obviously not as concerned with soup schedule as. <laughs> Fired last night. Top four to the score. Kip Wells, first pitch to Pudge. He liked it. First of the season for Rodriguez. Rangers up 1 0. Bottom eight. Pirates down 2 0 now. Rob McCobiak pitch hitting. Gary Naren calls for a change. And in comes John Rocker. And pretty good fastball right there. Great curveball right there. Great heat right there. John Rocker throws like that the rest of the year. He's going to be dominant, and that bullpen's going to be in much better shape. Here's Hideki Arabu. Oscar Acasu got fired as a pitching coach, wanted to make him the closer in spring training, and he got overruled. As it turned out, it's probably what they should have done, because he's been pretty good in that role for the most part. Well, he had one little, one little glitch. Pudge two for four, first of the year. First home run since August 29th of last year. Pittsburgh has lost four straight and seven of their last eight. Well, Pudge said if Piazza's going to start throwing like me, i got to start hitting like him. <laughs> on one of his old rivals from the AL West, the Oakland A's. And, of course, last time they met, Griffey wasn't a red. It was 1990 World Series. You remember Jose Canseco? It was an amazing World Series. I was certain the A's would win that World Series easily, and they ended up getting swept, and our pal Rob Dibble was one reason why. Larkin's still on the same team. The only guy along with Jose Rio, but Rio's on the DL. Yeah, it's too bad Rio couldn't pitch in this series. Friday, back to reality. Reds up 1-0. Miguel Tejada. It's Jimmy Haynes. Jacked. Tied at one, 15th of the year. Now in the bottom fourth, still one all game. Juan Encarnacion on third. Reggie Taylor lifts one to left. David Justice can't handle it. Encarnacion trots home. 2 1 Reds. Top six, two men on for John Mabry. John Mabry's played for a lot of teams. And it's getting hard. He hasn't done a lot of this. Right. And this ball is smoked. This gets, uh, this makes it 2 to 2. It was an interesting deal he for Jeremy Giambi. Giambi's much younger, of course, and they traded Giambi mostly because of his defensive problems that he can hit, and John Mayberry's hit very well since he's come over to this club. Off Scott Sullivan, two-run shot. A's go up 5-2 to two and win it 5-3. to three. Aaron Harang gets the win. Oakland has won five straight, 13 of 14, 17 of 20. Mabry, two for four, three RBI, had just six RBI at 18 games for the season coming into this one. And Oakland, they love this interleague play stuff. Now 12 and one against the National League. Griffey, by the way, one for four, hitting 217 in the 18 games since his return from the disabled list. Starting pitchers, 15 and three since May 25th. The guy got him started was Aaron Harang. To the juice box, Carlos Hernandez and Strohs hosting the Mariners. Second inning, Soup. Yeah. Each row. If I had that swing, I'd still be playing. <laughs> <laughs> Next batter, Jeff Cirillo. Plunked. Next batter, Brett Boone. He's walking, four straight pitches. Next batter, Ruben Sierra and Soup. You know it's coming. Ah, let's see. I think Ruben knows it. Step out, Ruben. Get off the line, Brett Foster, grab off in his grand solo. Austin Benz, 
Thank you, Dave Nehaus. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Clearly, the park is juiced. <laughs> Mariners up 5 nothing. Hernandez done. Jamie Moyer then getting it done. Change up. Sometimes up. he'll throw as many as 40 change ups in a game, an astoundingly high total. But you throw it as well as he does. And then, as Soup said in the last show, you're looking for that change up. You throw the fastball in on the guy. He's not ready for it. And he's done. 83 mile an hour fastball looks pretty good at that point. Moyer cruising along, gets Julio Lugo, pinch hitter Alan Zinter, Lance Berkman. They're all gone. Moyer, seven innings, three hits, didn't walk a soul, and 11 strikeouts. Scouts have got it all wrong. You got to start looking for these guys that throw 72 miles an hour and forget <laughs> these big, strong guys that throw 95 and blow their arms out. Hernandez lasted just two <laughs> innings. <Just> get <laughs> Shortest start of his career. Don't really do that, by the way. That's not really the way to go. Angels and the Brewers, Darren Erstad making things happen for the Halos. After a one-out single, Erstad is off and running. Stolen base, 10th of the year. Two outs. The one, two. Garrett Anderson brings him home. That's how you make runs. The team, this team does not hit home runs. They don't walk, but they hit with men on, and the third in the major leagues batting with men in scoring position. They hit a lot of doubles and triples as well. 25th double for Anderson. On the fourth, 2-1 Angels. Brad Fulmer hit by the pitch by Ruben Cavedo to lead off the inning. Next batter. This looks like the last highlight now. Benji Molina hitting, running, Threw the hole at short, Fulmer to third, nobody out. Next batter, Adam Kennedy. Bloop me. A bruise, a bleeder, and a bloop, and a run. This is how it's gone for the Angels a lot lately, and sadly for the Brewers lately. Base is loaded now, 4-1 game. Anderson, one more time. Two out hit, three RBI double. Everybody's coming home. And the Angels. Hand it to the Brewers, as Tim alluded to. A lot of folks doing that. 11 to 4 is the final. Five players with multiple hits. Anderson, two for four, a pair of doubles. Erstad, two for five, scored a couple of runs. Has 140 career interleague hits. That's the most of anybody. Brewers, one and six in interleague play so far this season. John Burkett against Adrian Beltre. Beltre. Logging on for his seventh of the season. Dodgers grabbing a 1-0 lead. The last time these two teams met, 1916, the Bay led the Sox past Brooklyn in the series. Today, Nomo, the former Red Sox, getting Brian Dahlbach. Dahlbach struck out three times on the night. Nomo went seven, gave up five hits, one run, struck out four. Bottom five, met on second and third for Dave Roberts. Dahlbach, not a great night, and a little too close. Roberts popped it over his head, double for Roberts, couple would score. Dodgers up 3-0. Shea Hillenbrand. Second home run of the game. His fourth four-hit game of the season. That's the most in the major leagues. Red Sox with them one on Hillenbrand's 13-3-2. Still in the eighth. Here comes Eric Gagne. Strikes out Trot Nixon to end the eighth. In the ninth, Gagne leading the major league in saves. Doug Mirabelli. Hi, cheese. Next batter, Gagne. Oh, the change gets Lou Merloni. Ben Affleck not pleased. Gagne getting Jason Baratek. Gagne, 37 Ks in his last 21 appearances, 26 saves and 27 chances. And whoever made this guy a closer after he used to be a starter deserves a big, fat, hefty raise because he has been brilliant. Dodgers win the game by a count of 3-2. to two. The Red Sox will be glad when this interleague stuff is over. They're 5-8 and eight in interleague play, 40-17 and 17 against the American League. He's after Coors in San Diego. Jason Giambi, the night off after jamming his finger in Thursday's game. Robin Ventura also with the night off. Ron Coomer at third, batting fourth in place of Giambi. Top one. They're on the corners for Coomer with one out. Oliver Perez offers, and Coomer hits a grounder up the middle. Julius Matos with the diving stop. Flips to David Cruz. Inning ending double play. Bottom one, two on for Bubba Trammell. David Wells deals and Trammell hits a grounder up the middle and through Cruz and Ron Gant. Why don't you come on home? Two nothing Padres. Top two. Two on for Rondell White. Perez delivering. White hitting a hard shot. The third top by D'Angelo Jimenez. Jimenez alertly throws over to Cruz covering second. Posada is out DP. Top five. New York down three to one. Perez deals and Bertie Williams a grounder up the middle. Matos Field steps on second himself on the first of the DP. Still 3-1 Padres in the bottom of the seventh. With the bases loaded for Weeki Gonzalez, Ramiro Mendoza pitching. 
Gonzalez hitting a hard line drive to left. White breaks in on the ball and it sails over his head to the wall. Cruz, why don't you come on home? Gant scores. Play at the plate and Trammell is saved. 6 1 Padres and Gonzalez's base clearing double. And the Padres go on to victory. Ninth already cut to 7 to 4. Victor Zambrano facing Juan Pierre. Pierre rips one down the right field line. Bobby Estelea, why don't you come on home? 7 5 D rays on Pierre's double. Hal McCray goes to the bullpen. In comes Esteban Yan. Brett Butler is glad Yan comes in. The other way, Pierre scores. D rays 7 6 on Butler's double. Next batter, Larry Walker. He crushes one to right. Butler scores on the fourth double of the inning, and we're tied at sevens. Bottom 10, they're on the corners for Walker against Yan one more time. Walker. Singles up the middle. Pinch runner Mike Hampton. Plates and the Rockies get the victory. 8-7. D-Rays have now lost three straight while the Rockies have won their second in a row, but they are still just four and nine in. Against Steve Paris in the bottom of the first game, tied at one. Game no longer tied at one. Luis Gonzalez will come around to score. Durazo with his only hit of the night. The double. Arizona with a 2-1 lead. Rick Kelly. He's no Kurt Schilling. He's no Randy Johnson. Couldn't prove it to Eric Hensky, nor Carlos Delgado. Helling retired 13 in a row at one point. He got a little help from his D. Shannon Stewart hits it 412 feet and 11 inches, and there is Steve Finley to keep it from going 413. A spectacular catch, and Finley giving up his body, playing a sparkling center field in his late 30s. Bottom of the sixth, Jose Cruz Jr. is much younger, and he goes Willie Mays. Terrific catch to Rob Quentin McCracken in the seventh. 2-1 game, Darren Fletcher bringing the big wood. Two-run shot, and the Blue Jays have a 3-2 lead. But in the ninth, we're locked up at three, and Rod Barajas, a hopper to third. Pinsky coming home, and Quentin McCracken's going to take the well for the ball club, scoring the winning run. The Diamondbacks with the walk-off bouncer, 4-3. Diamondbacks have now won five out of six. One through three hitters in the Arizona lineup. McCracken, Craig Council, and Gonzalez, seven of 13 on the night. BK Kim remains perfect in record. He is 3-0. O's and Giants at Pac Bell. Barry Bonds batting 409 over his last 15 games. Bottom four, San Francisco up 3 to 2. Rich Aurelia fly ball to center. Melvin Mora is there. It is worth another look. Mora, gorgeous. Bottom five, Barry Bonds is on second. Jeff Kent on first. David Miner. Fly ball to deep center. It looks like a home run, and Barry Bonds thinks it is. But Mora is there, and look at Barry. He thought it was gone. He goes into a trot, and he gets tagged out at second. Oh, Barry, you got to pay attention, bub. Top six, Giants still up three to two. Marty Cordova steps in. That is good. Wood, a solo shot to left. His second of the game, and we're tied at threes. Bottom eight, same score. David Bell, the former Mariner, looking good in a Giants uni. A solo shot off Rick Bauer. Bell's 10th of the season, and the Giants get the victory. 4-3. San Francisco now winners of three straight, while the O's fall to three and five on their 10-game road trip. Scott Erickson with issues. He's winless in his last 10 starts. He hasn't won since April 28th. Barry Bonds, one for one, with three walks, his 30th multi-walk game this year. Tom Glavin trying to become the second 12-game winner in the show. He's 11 and 3, 1.71 ERA. That leads the major leagues, as mentioned. The six-game winning streak stopped the last time out by Boston. Glavin getting Paglia Ordonez to ground her for call. Bottom second, Todd Ritchie had it going on for the White Sox. He was matching Glavin pitch for pitch. He gets chipper. Richie struck out four. He was dominating through seven anyway. Top three. Glavin in a bit of a jam. Ordonez up there and Glavin working him with the tough stuff. And Carlos Lee. Now that's a way, a way, away. The way we're used to seeing Glavin and he takes care of Lee. Glavin emerging unscathed. Bottom four. Chipper logs on. 
said it wasn't his prettiest swing, but it was a screamer that got out. A two-run shot, his eighth of the year. Richie gave up one hit through seven innings. That was it. Braves up 2-1. There's Glavin again getting his old teammate Tony Graffinino swinging. Five strikeouts for Tom on the night. Here's the Big Hurt. Georgia native returning to Atlanta. And Big Hurt puts one in the corner. Kenny Lawson would score. Hurt two for two and return to his home state, the Columbus native. And we are tied at two. Bottom of the eighth, Raphael for call with men on the corners. That's Jesse Garcia. But for call, did this on his own. And it is his 17th bunt hit of the season. Garcia puts the Braves up 3 2. And Nair Cox gives the ball to John Smoltz to finish things up. Getting. Now the former teammate, Kenny Lofton, to end it. Braves win it 3-2. to two. Glavin did not get the decision in this game. Braves aren't really hitting much. Only three hits on Friday. They've scored 20 runs over their last eight, but they've won six of them. Glavin left with a blister after seven. He needs just two strikeouts to reach 2,000. Mets 18 and 15 at Shea. Royals in the house. Sean Estes making his first start since the Roger Clemens incident. Top one, scoreless no longer. Mike Sweeney taking Estes out. Sweeney three for four on the day, his 10th home run of the season. Bottom four, Casey up two to one. Edgardo Alfonso with just a little crush. Second homer in as many days for Fonzie, number four on the season. Bottom eight, Royals up three to two with nobody out. Mike Piazza steps in. Hits one up the middle, Carlos Fables, the grab and flip to Nafi Perez, the throw, uh-uh. Eighth error of the season, Piazza gets sent to second, he'd advance a third on a ground out. Pitch runner Joe McEwing at third with one out. Alfonso singles to left, McEwing wants to come on home. Alfonso two for four, he's batting 317, we're tied at threes. Top nine, they're loaded for Perez with two outs, Mark Guthrie gets him to ground out to third, inning over, bottom nine. Two on, two out, Mo Vaughn. Check swing grounder to the third, Joe Randa's throw, dicey to first, and Tony Tarasco scores all the way from second base. Check out the replay, Tarasco never stopped running from second, and the Mets get the victory, their third straight, 4-3, is the final. Make it eight straight losses for the Royals. Friday's L drops the franchise's all-time mark below 500 for the first time since 1977. No score. He had said maybe he would bat right-handed against the knuckleballing Steve Sparks. Went lefty. Damian Easley makes a nice play. Castillo 0 for 1. Bottom three. Castillo against Sparks. Still left-handed. Still hitting. Still getting it done with the speed. Sparks couldn't come up with the play. And we are at 35 and still Still counting. Jeff Torborg told me on Thursday how the team has rallied around him and it's really been a source of inspiration in the clubhouse. And you see the fan club shirtless and painted on their chest. Bottom of the fifth, Castillo up again. This one a clean knock to the outfield. He was two for four, his 17th multi-hit game in the streak. He's hitting 403 during the streak. Sparks now against Mike Lowell. Shane Halter, an infielder by trade, having all kinds of trouble out and left. Castillo scores 2-1 game. Now Derek Lee has found the weak spot. Halter had said he was unhappy. The Tigers had pulled the plug on his playing career. And as I mentioned, he is an infielder usually, but that kind of thing's not going to help much. Halter with a tough night. Marlins win the game by a count of 4-1. to one. Castillo now 6 for 12 in his career against knuckleballers of the 62 hits he's had in his streak. 56 of them have been singles. While Tiger's second baseman, Damian Easley, is the anti-Castillo. He is now hitless in his last 25 at-bats, only nine. Twins fans migrating to Philly. Top first, Christian Guzman batting. Marlon Anderson skids off the turf. Nice job to pick it up. Soup. Brandon Duckworth, lots of support. Yeah, and most of the strikeouts he had tonight were lucky. He was just painting with everything. Swing back, change up, curveball. David Ortiz painted outside corner. Duckworth, superior game tonight for the youngster. Top seven, one on, one on fills. A.J. Przinski, high bouncer. Anderson tries to get the force out. Dustin Moore has other thoughts. That's how you break up a double play. That's how you break your back. Yeah, he runs that ball across the plate. The ball starts out in and runs across. That's pretty nasty. Light. Bottom seven, Travis Lee at the plate. Lee in the right field. Dustin Moore gets under his glove. E9, run scores. Maybe that's that back you were talking about. 2-0 fills. They go on to win it. 3-0 is the final. Duckworth, seven innings pitched, nine strikeouts. Allowed just four hits. No earned runs. 
in that one. Minnesota scored two runs or fewer in five of their last six losses, by the way. Indians and the Expos. Andres Calarraga looking for something. Omar Vizquel has other ideas. Great play. Omar Vizquel, another all-star shortstop from the American League. Javier Vasquez facing a bases loaded, no out jam. Todd yeah. Dunwoody. Again, Vasquez, one of the best young pitchers in the game. Here he checks third. Plenty of time. One, two, three, double play. That's why the Expos may hang in this, because they have pretty close to a legitimate ace. They get out of the inning. Speaking of getting out, Will Cordero trying to do that. Dunwoody gets back, makes the catch, lands a little awkwardly, and flips the ball to Chris Magruder to get it back. Fred Wilkerson scores after tagging from second. Supposed to take a 2-1 lead. Dunwoody left the game with an ankle injury. Nothing like we saw from Jeff Jenkins the other night. Top eight, still 2-1 Expos. Vasquez still pitching, tiring. Frank Robinson sticks with him, and it pays off. Jim Tomey, you go away. Vasquez, eight innings pitch, five hits, six strikeouts. Spose win it 3-1. Eighth straight home win for these guys. I love it when they stick with the starter sometimes like that. It tells the starter, I think you can do this, and he says, I'll show you I can. Best home record in Major League Baseball, the Montreal Expos, so I guess you don't need the big crowds to have the best home record. And they're certainly not getting them. The 26 